Hi. Um, thanks for joining. I hope that we're going to have a bit of fun today with some paint and some palette knives and brushes and things and abstracting some sketches from our backyard. I'm Kristen. Um, Kristen Retallick. I'm a visual artist. Uh, we're in Nathalia at the moment. We're getting some pretty awesome rain out there, which, you know, Nathalia is very rural. It's exciting to get rain. Um, I thought I would start just by talking a little bit about my practice and what I do. I've got a few pieces, a lot more pieces of my own around the studio today just so I can show you. I don't usually like to um, surround myself with my own artwork too much. Um, so I really like to create landscapes that are an experimental tangle of lines and colour blocks. So I've got one piece up here which does that a bit. Um, all of my work comes from the landscape that surrounds me that may end up looking like a completely different landscape to what Nathalia is. This does not look like Nathalia, obviously. Um, so that's where I'm going to go through a little bit about abstraction and how you can sort of have fun, just have fun with um, what you've got and create something new out of what you've already got. Um, so we're going to use these paints today. I've just picked ones that are pretty basic, things that you'd be able to get without having to go to any kind of specialised art shop. But I think a lot of the art shops are doing online um, sales now. So um, yeah, all this stuff should be reasonably easy to get, hopefully. So I've got um, those paints which I've just put out into four different, um, these are my palettes. <laughs> so I use container lids and this plate <laughs> as my palette. <laughs> um, the reason I love the container lids, especially the flatter ones, is because you get this afterwards, which I then <clears throat> also use to create inspiration for work. So if you use for inspiration for work. So I'm going to use one of them today. This one here. So I really love how um, what happens here is when the paint sort of crusts away, you get these really beautiful intricate lines. So mm -hmm. that's a really big part of where I get my ideas from and, and the way I use line. And I guess there's an example of that one, that on this one here. And um, that's from some recent work that I did about the Dookie Quarry. And then this is an older one where that shows a little bit of, a bit more of the scratching back into the paint. So a bit of texture and stuff there. So yeah, that's a little bit about what I do. Um, so you saw the paint that I've got laid out. The other thing I wanted to talk about was um, which materials, we're going to, uh, which equipment we're going to use. <clears throat> Again, I've deliberately picked things that are not necessarily art materials. So this is an old spatula just out of the kitchen. And I've got uh, just a butter knife. That one's obviously rigid. And then a plastic knife, which has a little bit more flex to it. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to use some palette knives, which are, you know, obviously artist materials. Um, I just use very basic brushes. I only really use small brushes. I don't tend to use massive big brush strokes, especially when I'm working. I'm going to be working quite small today anyway. Um, so I'm using these three brushes today. Um, this is, these are filbert shaped brushes. And that one's just a flat that brush okay uh, we may also I've got a fork in there as well we might do a little bit of work with that too um, so I'm hoping if you're actually painting along with me today that you've had a chance to do some little sketches I've done a couple uh, I did this one just in that's from my backyard and that shows some buildings and some trees and a little bit of the lawn there. Um, I wanted to just show how I've developed that. Um, I'm going to develop that on this small canvas. So I've transferred that sketch onto the canvas using charcoal. So it's gone from this to this. 
Um, I then experimented on uh, this material here, which is actually, this is gold, I think, for um, artists at home. These are um, the inside of mount board from, mount board from framing, from a framer. The framers um, sell them really cheap or sometimes give them away. So that's like the bit that you would cut out if you were doing a mat for a frame. Um, because it's quite thick, it tends to hold paint quite nicely and doesn't curve and buckle too much. So I've used that to create this composition here. So coming from that initial sketch from the backyard. So what I wanted to talk about there is how I have actually used these lines and then changed it into something else. I've made it into a different type of landscape that obviously is not my backyard, but the lines and shapes and composition are based on that. Um, start actually doing some stuff. Uh, but I will quickly though just talk a little bit about the paper. So I'm going to use two or three, depending on how we go for time, different papers today. This is one of my favourite papers to use. Uh, that's a watercolour paper and it's a hot press watercolour paper, so it's quite smooth. And I will also use a uh, watercolour paper with a bit of um, texture to it, which I've got hanging up here. It's the same, pretty much the same stuff. So that's a 200 GSM, uh, 185 GSM, sorry, watercolour paper. Um, and then the composition, well, I'm calling it a composition board, but it's really not. <laughs> My pretend composition board. <laughs> um, if we get to it, I'll, I'll do some more work of layering on that one. Um, so, do you want me to start just going or? Yeah, yeah. yep. All right, so I'll start with mixing some colours. So I'm going to use my long, just my flat brush to mix the colours with. I have four jars of water here. I like to have a lot of water available to me straight away because um, I like to just be able to quickly work on, you know, clean brushes and work as I go. Um, so I'll just start mixing up some because I'm going to work first on this one here. These are trees, but I'm going to change them into a sort of ochre stony type landscape. So I'm just working on mixing a little bit of this ochre colour up, adding a bit of white. Is that okay to see? River Connect says Nathalia rocks. Just so you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> River Connect are doing some pretty awesome stuff too online. So I like to make um, a few different colours that at the start, but then I'll also mix as I go. Just going to make some, mix some red and the ochre together too. And then I'll leave those colours available as well on the palette so I can go. <clears throat> I'm going to start by using this plastic knife. So I'm going with a light colour first. And I'm just going to block that in. And we're getting some texture because it's a serrated knife, which is quite interesting. So what I really want to do here is just muck around with some different um, shades and tones within the same colour palette in these bits here. Just scratching back in, moving the paint around. I'm pretty haphazard with the way I paint. I'm not um, fine arts trained, I'm not formally visual arts trained. I'm actually trained in graphic design. Gives it a very fun vibe though. I think it works in your favour. Yeah, I think so. I think if I was trained as a painter, um, I would work really differently to how I do. I mean, we all, all of our experiences, I guess, add up. 
to what we make and what we do. So why have you chosen this particular colour palette um, to paint these trees? Well, like I was saying, I'm trying to give the idea of rocks. So I'm sort of changing the trees into rocks. Um, I'm kind of just a bit obsessed with ochres and warm to uh, tones and colours, I guess. I'm really inspired by that dookie landscape that I showed the work of before. Mm. Um, because I guess it's exciting to me that I spent a lot of time in the Northern Territory back mm, a few years ago now. And the colours up there that are available up there are obviously really different to home, to here. Um, and that was really exciting to me. And then when I came back to live in this area a few years ago, I hadn't really been over Dookie Way very much before then. So I spent a little bit of time over there. There's obviously a really good arts community happening in Dookie now. And I got really excited that there was kind of like Northern Territory colours at home. <laughs> so that's pretty much why there's no like rules why I'm using these colours. <laughs> it's just my choice. <laughs> so I do this thing where I usually, sometimes I do this and then I regret it, where I tend to go straight in for the subject or the foreground and then um, go, oh, I've got to put the background in around it now. <laughs> but I can make it work. Some people would feel really uncomfortable with that, I think. I'm going to just use actual palette knife now just to sort of show a little bit of the difference. Scan some of that warmer red. Do you have any painterly um inspirations um as in other painters yeah yeah one of my very very favorite painters is um well, was sally gabori who's an indigenous painter was an indigenous painter um i think sam owns a piece i think um, I have to double check that for you. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the name of that piece. I think it was in Ever Present, the exhibition Ever, Ever Present. So, yeah, you can see that's a really different quality mm. to using that plastic knife. So if you've got, like, a really flimsy, cheap plastic knife, you could probably nearly get that same thing because what's happening is the palette knife is flattening against the page. And that way you can scrape. It's sort of more of a scraping back than a putting on. So putting a little bit on, scraping it back. Filling it in. Um, yeah, so Sally Gabori is one of my favourite painters. She did these beautiful, um, very abstract landscapes. Um, really bold colour and really, I guess, um, exaggerated colour which is what I love doing myself. I think my work is very different to hers, <laughs> <laughs> but I love her use of colour. I've got um, this here, which is a photograph um, by Tony Hewitt. So that he's a big inspiration. His photography is a big inspiration to me as well. Right, so I'm going to go in with that um, background now. And I've got these things which I haven't mentioned yet with my equipment. So I've got some matte medium and a gloss gel. So I would thin down with the matte medium, but you can also thin down with water. Um, it's matte medium. It's got a little bit of viscosity. So you get a, a, it sort of sits on the page more, whereas it, with water, it will just sink into the page. Um, and then the gloss gel is to build up and pasto. So getting that texture really high. Um, so that you can then, you know, work in over that and get nice layers. Mm. That's why I use it anyway. So I'm actually going to do that on here. <clears throat> and get a little bit of a sky happening. I 
always mix with my blues I always tend to put both a cool and a warm blue together for the sky I think the sky is not really blue it's almost more like a purple mm. maybe that's my eyes <laughs> <laughs> The skies change all over well, the yeah, country, so you know it might be <laughs> special Nathalia sky. <laughs> Obviously, it changes with the day too. <laughs> so that's thinned down, but it's obviously not to the point where it's um, like a watercolor. It's working in there. This is another thing that um, people who've been trained to paint probably feel really uncomfortable with. <laughs> Working in wet on wet with your background to your foreground. <laughs> Breaking all the rules. Breaking the rules. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to get my lighter okuri um, palette happening now It's almost like a flesh colour I've made there. Yeah. My flesh. I was going to mention that um, I have two kids, so... My painting rags are old, like muslin collars. <laughs> um, Lots of repurposing, I like it. Yeah, well, I kind of thought for today especially, because everyone's stuck at home at the moment and, you know, I can understand people aren't really wanting to venture out for too much mm. to be able to actually find some things that you can use at home. Mm. Um, might be a good idea. I'm going to... See if that dries enough for me to work in there with a bit of green, um, and I will go move to this one. What the hell are we going for, Tom? We're about halfway. Halfway. Halfway, yeah. So I'll with this one. And this is where the cloths come in, drying the brush off. So I'm trying to make sure I don't water my paints down too much um, by having a wet brush. These colours. Um, so I've worked on this and I've, I've used impasto gel in there, so it's quite um, textured. Um, the other thing I do sometimes is add sand to the paint to create texture. Um, and one of the things that I love about using texture in my painting is not so much the trying to represent a texture from real life but to then be able to do this sort of dry brushing technique, I guess, over the top. So picking up bits, using the side of the brush there. You could probably do this with, like, I don't know, paper towel even. And is that just one layer of paint that's on underneath with that's, the medium? Actually, that's two. So I've done a sort of like that would that's one layer there. So I would have done a I have a kind of slightly lighter green in that section there, and then I've gone over it with the a light like a yellow green and the gel medium in it. Quiet. 
You know, I'm trying to think of the name of the animal that the green part looks like. This? Yes. It does. That looks like a bit like a beak or something. It does. It? I, I have it in my mind, but I only have it in my German mind, not in my <laughs> English mind. <laughs> Bilingual things. <laughs> yeah. It does look a bit like a creature. Um, right, from there, I'm going to do some palette diving over the top as well, using that pinky colour down here. Actually, it's a bit too much. So I mentioned, I can't remember if I mentioned it or not, that when I create an abstract composition, I do, I think I do this without thinking now, but this is one thing I did learn at uni was about the rule of thirds and it's a pretty basic um, bit of compositional theory, um, but I've just drawn it up on the, is that dark enough for you to see on there? Just. Yeah. So dividing into nine squares, um, there'll be an area of interest in on the lines or in the intersections. So um, you may be able to see that in some of the more finished ones. Um, so when it comes to creating an abstract composition, obviously it's not necessarily about representing something from life. It's about creating interest in interesting places on the canvas or the page um, so creating something that sort of makes your eye and brain work across the page um, if I just put like that I would say is actually a little bit too central um, and I'd probably maybe I'll actually blend those two things together with something a little bit more interesting there to get rid of that central space I guess mm. um yeah I feel like a bit of an imposter when I start talking about painting theory <laughs> all right some greens I'm gonna try the fork it's a mm. total experiment <laughs> you know, maybe you've only got a fork at home to paint with the painters that like only ever use like they wear what's is that guy is it Tony Costa that wears gloves and just uses his hands? I think it's him. Maybe yeah. Yeah, there's a Aussie painter who does that. He might have a bit of trouble um, finding his art materials after COVID. <laughs> gloves are at a premium now, aren't they? I feel like that's how I would paint. I'm really not good with brushes. Oh, really? I mean, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. Like, I'm just sort of, like I said, blending those two spaces together, trying to create something a little bit more dynamic in that area that doesn't just fill that central space. So I thought the fork might work quite well with scratching in and, I guess, creating... Um, patterns that I'm not necessarily in control of pretty much how many layers of paint do you usually do or is there um, no rule of thumb no real rule for that I guess I'm just I just keep going until I'm happy with it um, you know, like this, I've thought about just framing that on its own, <laughs> um, but I probably won't. Uh, yeah, there's, there's like also that's um, white coming through as well. Yeah, and some canvas left untouched. Mm. Yeah, which is something I was experimenting a lot with last year, early last year. Um, I did a whole series of work that all had some white showing, and the reason for that was I was sort of experimenting with. Um, like simplification and I, I think Australia's really vast landscape, you know, a lot of our landscape is very empty, 
maybe not so much here like that's more of something that's happened through our messing with it um mm. so yeah that idea of holding back and letting the raw canvas show i think is um part of me going well you know if we keep messing with it <laughs> will there be anything left mm. anything actually rich left um i'm gonna work in i am gonna leave the, this is um these drawings actually came from the – this was grass in the foreground. I was laying on the ground drawing and then these trees were in the background. So I'm going to leave these as, le as leaves um, and go in with a – I'm just going to water down with water this time, this really dark green. A little bit of uh, – and a little bit of that dark grey colour. Now this flat brush, I find this really good to do with, so I'll fill in and then actually just roll the brush around, depending on where I am, to get a variation of my line and I'm flattening it onto the canvas there. So my lines that I've drawn on there with pencil, I don't really care if, you know, I'm not colouring in here. So I might roughly recreate what I've put there or I might just ignore it and go over it. But if I did really plan it out and go, all right, I want that to be exactly how I've drawn it out, how I have planned it, I would be, I don't know, I just don't think it would have the same energy. More of a rough guide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I might just start this one, this bigger one. Mm -hmm. And I'm... I know I was working with sketches from the backyard, but I do sometimes use photographs for inspiration too. This is a photograph that I took in Ireland. It's a terrible print. Um, and this is one I've wanted to use for a painting for a while. So I'm going to start this and see if this might end up being a bigger painting of mine. Um, so my, if I do underdrawing on a painting, and I'll do this on a canvas as well, I generally use these aquarelle or whatever, watercolour, water, dark wash sketching pencils. Um, there's that one and this, and this one that I've got. But you could just use a really basic watercolour pencil. Um, it doesn't have to be these, these ones. I like these ones for the canvas though because they're a bit um, softer. So I'm just going to draw that line in. The reason I like this photograph is that, that jagged line. Plus it's Ireland, Northern Ireland. Mm. So I'll use that big brush. How much longer have we got there again? About 10 minutes. And again, I'm, I'm going to do it the other way. And I'm going to just do a really washy Looking in at that see. And you can see there that line now disappears because it's watercolour. So that way you don't end up with your hard pencil lines showing if you're working in watercolour completely. So I'm actually just putting straight water on there, just using the paint that's left in the brush. Seems like a very fun way of painting. Mm. <laughs> And then what I've done is just sort of let that gather and that will create its own little jagged line. And then I'll sort of use that work back in the other way. Use that as a bit of inspiration. I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. So quite a bit of um, purpley tone. Oops, 
a bit of white fell onto my brush there. <laughs> So you're really using just very coarse brush strokes to imitate yeah. the waves yeah. that are in that image. Yeah. But not represent them so much. Like I would never get in and go, oh, where does that ridge go up and down? Because <laughs> <laughs> quite honestly, I don't really have the time or the energy for that. <laughs> Alright, I'd probably go with a little bit of grey in there too, just to sort of tone it down a little bit. It's very bright at the moment, but I'll let that dry and I'll come back to that. So I'm going to start, um, what I'll do is I'll actually pick up a light colour in there and I'll underwash. Um, so I'm going to go with that sort of yellowy, greeny yellow. So is underwashing just um, building up the layers in the composition? Yeah, so it's sort of just giving me a bit of a reference to where things are. Um, blocking out is also another term that people would use. That needs a little bit of a minute. Unless I can pick up that blue there. <laughs> so I'm just, again, just using my brush water. I wouldn't normally set my easel up like this because that's all going to go all over my other thing, but that's okay. working from a photo which I have given a composition to by taking the photo um, but if my photo or if someone gave me a photo to they wanted me to work on or something um, if it didn't already sort of play by those rule of thirds so um, you can see that line that's kind of gone across that intersection there um, and this there's an I guess an interest here because we're getting like there's an uncomfortable space there. We're getting close to the to the top there. Um, I would adjust the. I would adjust it. Um, if it, you know, if this was just a, a hill with the peak in the centre, I would just cut it in half or you know change it so it's got some kind of dynamic you know energy to it. Um, Not trying to be realistic. No. No. Just taking inspiration. Yeah. I really, this is, um, there's like some kind of purple flower, a mossy flower growing over there. So I'm going to just add a little bit of that colour in. I said I don't use big brushes and then I'm just using a big brush all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it works for this one. It does work for this. Do you find the bigger your canvases get, the bigger brushes and palette knives you'll use? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, like, for I've done some really, really big ones. Like, the work I was talking about before with a lot of white showing... We're all like 1800 by 1200 or something, a couple of them. Um, and I was using big house painting brushes for those, but only to really get the paint on the canvas. Um, I would then 
really go in with sometimes as small as this, even on a canvas that's, you know, longer than my height, um, and work in, I'm gonna, actually that's a good green on there anyway, you know, work in to create interesting edges. Because I don't, I mean, you could probably do it with the edge of a really big brush, but it'd be hard. Um, I don't usually use any black, um, especially at this stage, but I have on that. <laughs> um, and I'll usually use a black gouache, which is, if you don't know what a gouache is, it's a, like a watercolour paint, but it's a higher pigment in it so it's much more vibrant than watercolors generally are but i think a lot of the watercolors that we that we can get now have a higher pigment in them themselves and um, so the reason i use gouache is i like the way that you can control it um it's a you get a really nice smooth line so i only usually use black for really linear hard edge things like in that one there Once you put black in your palette, things get a bit dangerous <laughs> as far <laughs> as murky colours and um, darkness goes. Yeah, depends what you're trying to do really. So I'm just picking on the up on those jagged shapes of the rocks there. Um, I think these rocks here could really lend themselves to some palette knife work. I'm going to actually just go with some white, just to block out some shapes. There. Sort of deliberately getting a little bit of purple in it. Let's create some more. Now, I've gone back to this palette because it's got that um, same colour on it that we were using before. Just gonna sort of this is where I'm, what I mean, where I'm mixing as I go. I'm just kind of digging in. <laughs> Don't really know what's going to happen with that colour till it goes on. Um, and I love when this happens. When little, little bits like that appear. And then I can go, oh, do I harness that or do I go over it? I had a friend who has just come back to making art after years of only really being able to be mum. And um, she texted me a photo of some crumbly bits of pastel that had come off the edge when she was drawing. And she said, I want those bits. I want to keep those bits. <laughs> How do I do that? How do I keep these bits on? I'm like, oh, you need a very good fixative. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. How are we going? Probably rounding out now. Really? Yeah. You should um finish this and we can post it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at this. I, I'm glad I came across this photo because I'd forgotten about it. And it was pegged to the fo actual photos pegged for a Christmas present for someone for last Christmas. Oh, I hope they don't watch this. <laughs> She may. <laughs> She'll still get the photo, not this. <laughs> we'll do a nice print. <laughs> not, not the printout one. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, it's a beautiful spot. I'd like to do some kind of residence in the island. Mm. Something like that. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So we've gone over composition and the different painting techniques down here do you have any final words of um i think 
one of the things that I love doing is seeing what happens when you just muck around with line. Um, someone taught me something uh, when I was actually training to be an art teacher and it was to just draw some lines straight down with a bit of charcoal or a pencil or whatever and like I was doing with the paintbrush before, roll the uh, medium around, get some fat bits and some thin bits and just and then see where that can actually lead. So, and you know, like your drawings don't have to be tight and what they first were. <laughs> so. In the spirit of abstraction. Yes. <laughs> cool, all right.